There is a world beyond our own vision. A place full of digital possibility, personal belief, hopes, wishes, dreams, and perhaps so much more of all of humanity. A world unlike any we have ever seen. As five young youth enter this world, we are here to find out if they can become Digi Destined. Good morning, afternoon, and or evening, depending upon time zone. Ladies, gentlemen, and all those in between and beyond that binary of the internet, welcome back to Neon Lights Roleplay. And more specifically, welcome back to With the Will, our Digimon Odyssey. I am Young Foxy, your host for the duration of the stream. With me are four incredible storytellers who are here to tell the story of their Dig Digestin and part in Digimon. I can tell you who they are, but I wouldn't do it as well. So let's just go around the horn one quick time and please let me know who you are, who you're playing today who your partner Digimon is, and where you can be found on the internet. We're going to start over on the left here, switching up a little bit, with the ever-incomparable, the ever-incredible, and the ever-amazing Corndog McGraw herself. She finds the unmute button. I lost the mute button again. <laughs> I'm not even stubborn yet. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Corndog McGraw. Uh, I'll be playing Isabella... Six. Books. Uh, and just doing, doing my part uh, to help my friends as we traverse through the digital world. Swinging oh. down and around to a close and personal friend of mine. Oh, Isabella! Your partner in Digimon. Uh, my partner in Digimon is Lala Mom, uh, the cutest little floral baby. True. Factual. All we things floral in my life. We did the math. We did the research. Lalamon confirmed the cutest, actually. We did the, did the numbers on it. We're in the numbers. Data's in. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> well, swinging down around the counterclockwise direction to a close personal friend of mine, someone who I have been proud to know for over a decade now and who I think has a special place here on the Neon Lights Roleplay team. Hello, my darling Spree. How are you? I'm doing well. It's always good to be hanging out with you guys again. Uh, today I will be playing Fire, and, uh, well, she's tired of this fucking desert, uh, <laughs> and her partner Digimon, Aranamon, definitely doesn't like when you brush her fur or give her head pets. Are you Baka. sure about that? Or is she just lying about it? I mean, that was the insinuation, so... Exactly. <laughs> well... Head pat uh, trickery aside, we are going to swing ourselves right around directly under me, but very far from the bottom of anybody's player list to the incomparable J. And Acres. Hello, friend. Ah, I can't hear you anymore, unfortunately. No. Hello? No, we fixed Hello? it. There it is. Now, yep. Yeah, um... Tech Gremlins, they happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, my, I'm 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 Jay Nakers, and uh, today um, on Ruth Real, I am playing uh, Scarlet um, Goliath. Yes. And uh, yes, uh, <laughs> um, heir to a military company, when she doesn't really like that. Um, her partner Digimon is Terriamon, um, and. She has conflicts. She has some conflicted uh, feelings about how the fact that this cute little bunny can turn into a gun into a, a cute bunny with guns for hands. Gun rabbit. Sorry, I had to yes. one time. Apologies. The uh, one Scarlet becoming the new Iron Man. One and only bullet bunny. Bullet bunny. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm keeping that one. I'm gonna keep I'm holding that one for later. Actually, definitely a good one. Oh no. Well. <laughs> Certainly no foreshadowing in the, in that discussion of character, and I'll uh, I'll leave that one where it is for players to figure out what that means later. Skipping over the empty spot of our lovely classical Glaza, who plays the incomparable Kian and their partner Doramon, we're going to skip over to the other side of the overlay on the far right there for the last of our cast members, but absolutely the far from the least of the players here. Someone whose brain I enjoy picking, opening, and creating with every time I get a chance to. You all know and love this person, obviously, by now, if you've been here long enough. It's Legendary Vermin. Yes, it is I, Legendary Vermin, the highly comparable. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be playing Artie Fucks, uh, brother of, of Isabella, and uh, yeah, 
just just I, general menace. Uh, Artie's partner Pokemon is Jellymon, the the <laughs> fisty fighting Jellymon Pokemon who can curl up what inside her own little jellyfish hat and be as much of a menace as Artie is. Mm. Definitely uh, feeling extremely normal about his relationship with Jellymon right now. Extremely normal. And then we'll, we'll leave that normal. foreshadowing along uh, with, well, I guess maybe we'll see where things are at with that today. Maybe, who knows? And in case you haven't figured out who I am by now, folks, I'm Young Foxy, AKA Big Foxy, also knows your favorite Fox Billy's finest. And I'm playing everyone that's not these four incredible people uh, and or their partners, even though I do play those sometimes. It's really hard playing five episodes at one time, by the way, if you were wondering, but I tried my best to make it work. And so with that said, let us let the music ride out as we swing right back in to a discussion of what happened last time. See how I timed that? I'm good at that. Last time on With the Will, our cast ventured themselves out into the desert. After a fight with some Vulturemon two episodes ago that went pretty well, and with the last of our cast gaining their champion forms, they spent some time moving through the de this desert, learning through things, and perhaps gaining more time about each more about each other in the process. There was some connection felt as Doramon and Kian went separated to discover if they could pee or not. <clears throat> Along the way, there was a bit of a moment with Artie while they kind of connected and sort of gathered, seeming that there was some feeling some force perhaps the two of them could connect to with their partners. The rest of the crew gathers, heartfelt convos had all around as many people discuss, some bonds growing closer, some perhaps feeling their first bits of tension. Nonetheless, as the clearing they were resting in was filled with dozens of digital lights as these small fairy-like creatures swarmed their camp and huddled all about them, they found themselves surrounded with visions, a prophecy prophecy they seem to have inevitable connection to. And thus, as morning dawns, they will carry forward towards the ancient temple, which will hopefully hold some secrets for them. We are going to open directly right back where we are. The morning is pretty straightforward. You are all able to find yourselves functional and moving. You notice again that as the day switches directly over to uh, almost in, the, in that click cycle, the heat just immediately ticks back up. It's almost like an alarm if you weren't used to sleeping in the cold or in the heat. It's almost like a really good alarm just suddenly being 30 degrees hotter out of nowhere. Uh, not a lot of fun, it turns out. Um, but you wake up out of your meager tents and from your rocky outcropping you made to escape the burst of the heat. And you find yourselves back on the road. The summer wind, or I guess what counts for it, is billowing. You can still hear the high cries of exotic bird-like Digimon off on the horizon, kind of heralding your travel. But overall, compared to the past few days, today feels uneventful, which might just be a nice thing given the way things usually go. I've got nothing much else to add here. So I've been telling you about how great these people are for role play. So let's go ahead and see it firsthand. Right, loves? The scene is yours. Oh. Oh, well, now you just put us all on the spot. Oh, no you, pressure. Like... Relax. <laughs> I actually do have something to say right on the spot. Go. Uh, mentioned that we move straight forward, uh, but I would like to move forward as gaily as I possibly can mm, okay. across this desert. Would you like to just skip and wave your arms as we go? No, 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 no. No, no. You've got some good lesbian vibes uh, going on over here in my overalls. Uh, Double knotting my shoes, uh, checking out the horizon, actually figuring out if we can find directions here uh, based on the sun. So, uh, you know, just checking my surrounding, being observant, and then also being gay mm. at the same time. That's quite the lesbian walk, I would say. Yes, thank you. Isabella, could you quickly make me a. I want to say it's smarts is the role for your stat you have for that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 3d6 for you. could do that. Take your time on it, love. Roll 3v5, because that's a thing. That's a thing you can do it. Uh, I rolled a one and two sixes. Oh, double sixes. We're doubling that critical gauge already, friends, huh? Eee. Man, <laughs> it ain't with the will if we up with the critical gauge, right? Any case, as I do that, <clears throat> Isabella, as you're looking around the horizon here, you're noticing that 
when it comes to kind of circumnavigating using the sun to find direction because of the unique way the sun tracks the skyline here and it's almost kind of skybox like it's almost easier to track uh direction using the sun than it would be on earth because you're not trying to follow where the sun is based on a certain time it's more just you know it's the daytime cycle currently so the sun's going to be right there and so you know that that direction whether it's north or east or west you can just kind of orient yourself relative to the to where the sun's pointed and it's like relatively good you, you can get a good sense of where you guys are going you maybe aren't sur super sure that, like you're you know like you're again you're no like like the actual cardinal signs at this moment exactly I just know. You just know, like, sunward, have, like, left of sun, of right of sun, you know, like, shit like yes. that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, we you're pretty set on that. I will not share this with anyone. <laughs> is, there, is there a uh, map function on our digivices? What do you know there is? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. This is why we pay nice. you the big Ernie, while, while you're in the middle of that, it's just kind of, like, fucking around on his phone, and he's like, Oh, that's neat. Scrolls right by the map. <laughs> good, that's good. good at discovering things. Terrible at being helpful. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe. what's what, 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 what you find? It's, they got Google Maps here. She, she like blanks. She's like, how did I not? And she goes up and I guess Carl has been spending a lot of time in the digivice trying to find things, and she never figured it out. So yeah, she just she goes and she pulls it up. It's just like, okay, yeah, yeah. It's under topographical data. Okay. It's how a bad far... name for their Google Maps, but you know. Everything is weird here. Yeah, it doesn't really. It's not very marketable, is it? Like, how can you market top topographical data? Like, oh, well, D, am I right? Oh, there we go. Top, top D. Oh, we just... we've got we've got a plan here. <sighs> me, 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 me. I'm <laughs> mispronouncing stuff. Like, uh. Artie just starts elbowing Scarlet. As, as Isabella is like top D. Eh? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> uh, anyway, um. Uh, Terry Ramon, who has been watching the, uh, the, the slight bantering, just goes, Oh, wait, I get it. Like D for David, right? Yes. Ooh. Uh, the, yep. the, the boyfriend yes. that doesn't exist. She doesn't, but. Uh, it's just like well, I don't know why I'm getting so defensive. Like you can believe he doesn't exist all you want, but okay. Uh, surprisingly, we do. <laughs> while while you don't really come to your own defense, Ariarmon does. He kind of jumps up and it's just like, "Hey, lay off!" She said he exists already. Stop being mean about it. Well, okay, Terry. Still, little guy. Didn't, We're didn't just to, ripping. Didn't mean to upset Scarlet. I just wanted to poke some fun. He does kind of hop back down and unbristle himself a bit, but there is a slight fold in his arms as he kind of turns and starts marching back forward. See? We're all vibing here. Uh, I would have let any of our human casts here go ahead and make a... I'm going to say a spirit test to get a sense of what where Terrier Mon's at right now. Do I get any of the human cast? Any of you. Ar Artie yeah, is they... not doing the check because Artie does not have high emotional intelligence. <laughs> okay, okay, um, so, I mean, can I... Do you get a bonus when it's your own Digimon? Nope. Uh, no? Okay, can I use my luminous being to maybe try and cut through the noise of that? Oh, hey, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Look at okay. you using character abilities. Look at, the, look at you, look at you. While you do that, I am summoning the devil over here with quick um, sixes. Oh my good oh, lord. Corndog, stop. Dice. Oh no. I can't be Wait. contained. Trip sixes? Yeah. That's, triple sixes means six successes. 
It's exactly what it means. So it's it's really I'm like quadruple sixes, to be honest. <laughs> Because this user, we use D6s in this game, right? Yeah, that's 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 the dice used in the game. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a D40 system. Okay, so <laughs> it's, I, it's, I, it's a D27 system, actually. I, I, it's I, very I, much. D69 system. And then boost just means it reduces the number I need to succeed by one, right? Uh, yes. So yes. Yeah, well, this, this isn't a group puzzle. Instead of four or higher, you need three or higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I got three threes. Okay, well, then. Yeah. That'll do it. Um, yep. Pyre, did you roll, or did you did you want to roll, or you're not, you're not gonna bother? Oh, uh, sorry. No, it's fine. You don't have to. Uh, what, what was the what was the pass for? Uh, we're seeing if you can like intuit right. where Terrier Mon is at. Your uh, spirits is the uh, is the, uh, the the stat. Hmm. I mean, I'll roll, but it's not gonna go well. That's fine. You're, I mean, you're allowed to do what Artie said. Artie literally chose not chose to not roll as if, as Artie wouldn't look into that kind of thing. So you're allowed to do that. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Four so, um, two is just short. So, Scarlet and Isabella, you, it's kind of like a, a bit of a, takes a moment to kind of get a sense of it. Scarlet, you kind of get the sense of it first, and you're maybe like, Mon really seems fighty today. Like, he's just not, like, jumping at the first thing that kind of, like, makes him get a bit bristly. And then it's, it's Isabella. For you, it feels like, you remember growing up with Artie, times where, like, you'd be on the playground and, like, someone would just look the wrong way and Artie would be like, okay, what's up then? Let's, let's go! And, like, this reminds you of that. Just, like, that bristle for a fight at any provocation. It's... You want to say it's immature, but it's not giving you that same vibe of, like, fighting for no reason. It just feels like, for lack of a better word, Terrier Moss is trying to get his anger out in whatever way will let him appropriately so i think scarlet's gonna like kind of catch up to terry i think um you said he kind of like walked off like kind of ahead of us right mm -hmm. so um scarlet's gonna you know walk faster to you know keep pace with him and just be like hey um Thank you. Um, you, you okay? Well, he kind of just, you know, shakes his head a bit. Just, I'm fine. I just don't like when people are mean, you know? It kind of rounds around. And you don't stand up for yourself. They keep saying stuff about you that's not nice, and you just keep letting it go. Yes. Yeah, you're right. No, I... It, it didn't seem if they don't want to believe me about David like I mean like we're here it's not like I can let like let them meet him here so it just seems like if they don't want to believe me then that's I can't really do anything to change that right now so I, I, I guess I just thought it was better to like just let it go he kind of he doesn't fall back almost as much as he you know rolls his head a bit and kind of just he says look i get it you're not big on fighting that's fine i'm just saying that sometimes you gotta fight not saying fight them but just think about it oh uh, scary to think about but yeah he kind of just almost it's jokingly but there's definitely a slight edge to the tone just yeah we'll stop with the scaredy cat then and like keeps himself moving Scarlet, go ahead and gain one bond stress for me okay <laughs> and it's sorry, go ahead. like we recently gg rolled i think so our bond point should be back up to seven I mm -hmm. think, right okay yeah as a reminder, if y'all have, if y'all ever have your maximum number of stresses, and you have more bond stress than you have current currently available bond points, you experience a bond break episode. We'll cover that later. Don't want my omelet. It's actually as Terrier Mon kind of waves you a bit and uh, starts to walk. 
Isabella, you were keeping your eyes on the horizon, kind of watching things and looking for things. Artie, you were kind of, uh, you know, bothering Scarlet a little bit, but also just kind of like ch chatting around and like looking at the map as well, I remember. Specifically at this point, Artie has moved on to making sure that Jellymon stays like appropriately uh, hydrated by using her as a towel for his lower back sweat. Uh, Jellymon wants to oh. complain about this very much. Unfortunately, making their face pressed in your lower back, the complaints come out, it's just very muffled, just, if you could please stop, seriously, it's really, oh god, it smells so, you're gonna dry out. <laughs> and it just, yeah, um, so, and I guess, while you're all watching this, Fire, is there anything you're up to specifically right now? Uh, I guess, I guess Fire will just kind of go over to to Scarlet when when a chance presents itself and be like, "Hey, sorry, like I know we poke fun about it, but I I do I am sure David's a very nice guy, and it'd be great to meet him sometime." Well, we have to figure out what's going on here and how to even. If we can, if we can get back, which I, but yeah, like yeah, like once we can get back, sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And it's as you all are finishing that little that little quick little uh, little sharing of a moment that. Isabella, you're watching the horizon, keeping an eye on things, as you see, just about left of sun, maybe not too far, about 20 or so degrees left of sun. It looks at first like a hill, peeking over the dune, just another hill, it's a desert, it's full of them, obviously. But as it comes and crests the horizon, you can see the top of it is square, and then under it, a much larger pyramidal structure, then several long columns, and then a larger massive square kind of cube structure under it it's also made entirely of a dense stone like at least what looks like stone from a distance i won't spare you guys the description any longer it's pretty easy for you to tell this is well it's a temple is it the one you're looking for yeah, who could say well is the giant crystal above it because we know that was no the temple we were headed toward right funnily enough as you're looking up at the horizon line you can see that it's almost like it's sort of like perspective tricked you a little bit. The tower is further behind the temple. It's certainly still in the vicinity, but where before you thought, okay, we need to break this thing in order to get to the temple. It's now seeming like, okay, we can get to the temple, see what's happening first, and then deal with the Black Spire. Unless you guys want to go deal with the Spire first, you have that option. Nah. Let's go to the one that's well, closer. That's more that walking. Place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but it's fucking hot. <laughs> and Artie is, not, is wearing a sweater. Not sand. Uh, my overalls are Take really off the sandy. sweater, you fucking... Yeah, Lalamon is literally I'm like, not wearing a coming... shirt under it. I don't want to get sunburned. Uh, while the two of you are bickering, Lalamon <laughs> is actively digging in your pockets, Isabella, and just like pulling sand out. Just... Eh. I would like to leave this oh, desert, everyone. Failing. There's no plants here or anything. Not even cactuses. Not even I tumbleweeds. Seen a cactus in like that a is day. not actual deserts. That's like just the arid. Like <laughs> We're in the Sahara. Nothing but dunes right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. As you guys are just uh, out. as you guys are making this decision while you angle yourself towards the temple, you come upon what looks like its main face. It's got a large set of out of pushing out of that 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 cube base a large uh, set of stairs. It's also covered in symbols, writing. You would think if you were home, these were hieroglyphics of some kind, maybe an ancient language of some kind. That's the first thing it gets you. It doesn't feel reminiscent of anything you've seen on Earth before. The symbols do, are everywhere. Do any of the, do any of the symbols look like the ones that were drawn out by like the village person for look us? You, look at you! Look at you! Look at you! Being on point, actually. Yes. As you're looking, you see that there are 
obviously you can tell there's there's symbols clearly covering every face of this thing so you can't see the whole of this mosaic inscription whatever it is obviously but you're seeing at least a couple of those symbols in places notably fire you recognize that symbol that was pointed out to you the sort of typhoon hurricane symbol with the two arms on either side coming out of it indicating friendship and isabella you also notice your symbol that kind of heart shape going uh go, kind of inverted in there's a couple others around and i think that while you're not recognizing it, like, while uh, Artie and Scarlet, you don't see your symbols on this face of the wall, you can sort of pick up on at least similarities in some of the other, like, symbols you see based on some of, the, like, the random, you know, scrolls of text you see across your devices and things like that. You rage that this is clearly some kind of inscription, prophecy, or a writing. It's a temple. You're sure it's something. Maybe it's a burial inscription. Who knows? You could find out inside. And it's as you're thinking that, you're coming up these stairs and they're high stairs you're not just able to like take a step up it's a bit of a like to get yourself up each stair thankfully there aren't too many just maybe 30 or so and as you end up you know at the top you can tell me how fatigued you are at, at happily the first thing you notice though is that while there is a massive open wide i guess archway which would let you into the temple it is currently covered by a massive stone boulder. A boulder, you say? It would appear as if at some point... You want to say, again, erosion or time would have led to boulders falling off of this thing, but you don't That's know how this really world works. For all it knows, this could have just been designed this way on purpose, or just been scrap code that patched it this way, or who knows. Is it a small boulder the size of a large boulder? It's a large boulder the size of a not-so-big boulder. Hmm. Uh, what did uh, what did the pebble say when it wanted to to have a little more confidence? Jellymon already size. What? I what? Didn't want to be a little bolder. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lalamon pops back up from inside Isabella and uh, Isabella's, uh, you know. Uh, kangaroo pouch and just this looks like the place I think so, so like as we get to the top um, like Scarlet's actually in pretty good shape like she doesn't I mean it's like she doesn't skip leg day no yeah no she doesn't <laughs> skip she doesn't skip leg day like she's in pretty good yeah she's kind of fine actually <laughs> Artie is, is sweaty, but also fine in the way that, like, teenage boys who do okay at P.E. are fine doing physical activity. You really just like me. <laughs> uh, my fire has managed to get up not that much slower than the others, but is, is definitely, like, taking a moment and just legs are feeling a bit sore from just going up all those stairs. Mm. Well, and and Artie gestures at the large rock. Mm. Here we are. Open sesame. It's the right song. Um, I guess Scarlet's gonna... Maybe we have a delete function or something, and... You might go, go looking through her digivice and be like, is there a delete random data function? Carrier oh, just be... throws his hands up and is like, just let me go Gargomon and blast the thing. Come on! Artie uh, will be like over on the side of the boulder being like... <laughs> uh, so uh, like, ah! Scott... Scarlet will look up, look, will look up at Terramon, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, that would actually be, like, super helpful. I didn't know you needed my permission to actually do that. Terramon's just kind of like, I thought you did it. It's not like I just told myself to do it. Okay, well, oh. so she's going to, like, she's, I'm going to hold up my D device, I guess, to... Uh, maybe it's this thing. And Terriermon, did you evolve? Terriermon kind of just 
<laughs> and nothing seems to happen. Mm. What gives? I don't know. Huh. Well, what were you feeling when you digivolved before? Uh, full, mostly. <laughs> What a, what about Scarlet? Well, Scarlet didn't digivolve. No, but the last time Thank it did evolved, the last time it did evolve, like the, the time, that was when we were all being shot at, and Has Maybe. anybody come to help Artie push the boulder? I'm about to say, Artie, you want to roll strength, Artie? See how that's going that's for you? It's, 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 I, okay, kids. Currently helping. Uh, Scarlet's gonna. No, Scarlet is gonna be like, we were all being shot at, and then she's gonna be like, oh, maybe, and then she's gonna go over and she's gonna put all her force behind trying to help Artie move this boulder. You, did you, would you call this a reflex? check or a spirit check I'm gonna say mm, I feel like I feel like spirit is probably more appropriate yeah cuz you're more given the old college admit, try I'd, I'd prefer reflex because I'm better at that or should I well since I'm helping uh, well <laughs> while they're doing that mm -hmm. fire is gonna be like looking to run on and just be like yeah do you get can you, my... Can you deal with a large boulder? Uh, I got two ones and a three. That's so not great. It is, um, it is truly in vain. Uh, I got two uh, successes on spirit. All right, so that drops the DC of this check from its uh, total of six down to four. Uh, in So, Artie, you are just <laughs> really, really shoving it. Scarlet, you are putting your effort into it. Darius Mod even to come over just kind of like... <laughs> Dilly Mons adding in. You all shove as hard as you can. It's just gonna it, slight nudge. That's right, it. So a little bit of debris. You all pull it's, away. It's, it's one of those things where we start rolling it and then we we accidentally roll it into a divot and it's like ah. Oh, no. Oh, so, no. I, I, I was trying to do something before, um, because like now that we're actually all like trying to like actually like actively trying to like, you know. We're, having, we're in conflict oh. with this boulder now. We're in conflict with this boulder and we're all like really, really trying to like move this boulder. I then try and think about Terramon. Did you evolve? Can you, Terramon, can you try now? Are you? Can we really need to move this boulder so we can get in? Terramon pushes as hard as he can. It's just hit, 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 hit. <laughs> Just like making guns out of his hand, and it's like, <laughs> no, nothing. Sorry. Well, no, it's it's fine. Don't. I was I was thinking that maybe it was because like you know, we were under stress before, because you know the people were shooting guns at us, or well, because we really <laughs> I guess needed it. Then. Uh. I want to get us, cut us over take to, out his uh, pocket knife, mm -hmm. and and not pull out the knife part, but like the bit that's like a, a wine opener, and he's like, ah, ah, does my menacing help you? You get some blinks, <laughs> and doing my best here. <laughs> Let's quickly cut over and take a look at Isabella and Fire. Uh, Isabella, specifically, what are you up to right now? Uh, I'm watching the struggle for funsies. Of course. Uh, but also trying to, like, make sense of any of the icon iconography that we've seen walking in here and stuff like that. Like, I know what I've seen. And in my brain, I'm like, oh, it's a heart. That means, like, love and friendship or something like that. Like, I can make sense of them, but then I'm staring at other ones like this. Mm. Just <laughs> open mouth full head of thoughts and none of them make sense. Isabella, can you give me a spirit roll real quick? Oh, yeah, I can. I'm so spirit. I believe. Oh, computer, go. Also, I love this song. 
Perfect. For Cessus. Isabella, as you're staring at this wall, trying to make sense of any of these images, you get a flash. It's a woman? Or a figure like a woman. Statuesque and proud with this ornate headpiece like a blooming flower covering its entire facial structure. This long, flowing cloak all around it and a curling whip of thorns whirling around its body. Only for a moment or two you see this figure standing there, proud and strong. And then you're back. It's almost like you couldn't read these things, but like if you could in the same way that words make us sometimes visualize things. When we read a book, we start to kind of take ourselves there. It's almost like you've got that experience without actually being able to read the words. At least for a moment. I can't believe you just uh, having gay thoughts at the temple. You were just going to the it's temple. It's a really funny story thoughts. that I'll tell everyone on break. Uh, that's literally about this. Uh... <laughs> uh, anyways. I'm gonna go and try and stare at the other icons and see if I can get another vision to understand this uh, further. Just, just try and get the good old college track. Mm -hmm. I'll hold Renamon that for just one fine? second. While we... Uh, Fire, you asked Renamon could they handle opening a small boulder. Or, or, or cracking this boulder, basically. Deal, dealing with small yeah. boulder. Renamon <laughs> looks over and is just like... In this form, likely not, but with a bit of a boost. All right. Uh, fire will just meet eyes with, with Renamon and, and Nod and just take out her Digivice. Renamon, Digivolve 2! There is a I'm bright sure. flash of light as the screen of your Digivice lights up. Renamon engulfed in the same like crystalline blue light for a brief moment. And as it settles, Yokomon stands in front of you, tall and proud. Hmm. That seems to have worked. Damn, she's really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> that does lead to the question. What seems to be the problem with Terriermon? Terriermon stops pushing to go, what do you mean? What's the problem with you, huh? Wait, who said? Wait, what? Terriermon, who is currently bickering with Yokomon. Well, not bickering, but bickering at Yokomon. Yokomon's not responding, of course. Ears folded up into secondary fists. <laughs> Put him up! Put him up! Oh no. Uh, as you do this, though, Foxfire, uh, Yokomon just, again, kind of just shrugs off Terriermon and just says, again, if you all wouldn't mind, and, like, kind of leans down, already being able to gather that purple fire in her mouth. Uh, oh, Terriermon, come on, let's get, let's get out of the way. Yeah, whatever. And, like, shuffles on out of the way with on, on little legs. Uh, Arnie, I'm assuming you're also moving out of the way? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, uh, Jellymon is, like, in jellyfish form, like, over my shoulder, mm. and we just, like, scoot off to the side. <laughs> and as a stomp on the ground, that plume of purple fire exhales and kind of gathers at, the, at their feet, brushing up their tails, becoming these nine circles of purple fire. Foxtail Inferno! And that travels forward in a circle, smashes that rock, and scatters it. Bits of debris and dust start to kind of shower over those of you who are closest. Nothing painful or, or dangerous, but, you know, mildly uncomfortable, maybe. And as it all settles, there is a clear, open path to the temple. A bright, open walkway. And Isabella, you have been so focused staring at these symbols. You've been, like, just trying to get, get sense of seeing what's going on. As soon as the... Oh, Mike. As soon as the... <laughs> boulder is blown away, you look into the vast darkness of this entrance as, you know, the light from the sun is still kind of making it hard for your eyes to adjust. You don't see the innards of this entryway first. 
you see all the symbols on all the internal walls of this place light up. Just ignite in bright white light. And I need every person here to make me a spirit test, please. Did not do so good at that just a second ago. We'll be spending a bond point for two extra dice. Sounds like a good plan. You know what? I'm spend a bond point for two extra dice as well. It's like a wonderful plan. How do we get bond points back, by the way? Uh, when, when resting normally. Okay, so we would be at full right now, yeah? We'd be at full right now. Yes. Sick. I'm gonna do that too. I don't know what this is gonna do if I mess it up. Ah! Beautiful five successes. Mm -hmm. Three Completely successes. Completely unnecessary. Does, does, does the this... order we're doing this in matter? Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, a four, five, and six. So four successes so and corn dog. Uh, I posted it in chat just so I didn't come across as uh, being extra, but I once again rolled trip sixes. My five. God. God, are dang, you really enjoying this Google dice rolling? Google's it's enjoying nice. you, jeez. I'm using Google it's dice rolling. Google, Google it's Dan. It's, that, it's Dan. It's the Dan's Dan's tricking the, the Google algorithm for the dice roller to help oh, himself to get it through. That's just that's just happening. All right. Well, so we had another trip. So highest roll was Isabella, followed by Artie, and then it was uh, Scarlet. You had how many sets? You had three. Uh, yeah, I had three. And then and at fire at four. Okay, perfect. Um, I wasn't looking, but I assume you incremented the crit gauge. Yeah, I I'm, 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 I haven't incremented yet, but I'm about to do that right now because we had a <laughs> lot of sixes. Four of them specifically. From, Corn Dog has already contributed. Cor Corn Dog has single handedly <laughs> almost filled the critical gauge. <laughs> what do we do with what do we do with a critical gauge if we're not in combat? Ah, we'll figure there's, that out. There's, there's literally a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's stuff do we can do. It. Don't sweat. Um, um okay. any case. But I just want to say it's unfair that, that Corn Dog then flexed on us being the most muscled person honestly here. i not... felt so i i feel really small right now in like the best possible oh, no. way I, I i'm just saying that's just what a dainty we lady we are all lalamans to honest, your honestly Isabella. please <laughs> any case as we all contemplate being you. corn dogs lalaman please and thank you uh you all stare into the bright lights of this temple as all the symbols come to life and then it consumes all of your vision and when things slacken, none of you are where you thought you were a moment ago. Where you are, Hello. we'll find out in just a moment, as we'll be right back. An hour already, right? Crazy, yeah? See you in a little bit, friends. Don't, uh, don't break anything. Touch that dial of that browser, and we, I'm going to be sad at you. And then, sorry, you? touch the dial of the browser, and Lalamon won't get naps or snacks. And you wouldn't do that, would you? No. You would not do that to Lalamon. You wouldn't exactly. do that to Lalamon. So stay right here in this chat yeah. until we get back. You must stay. Love you all very okay. much. And we return. Welcome back to another session of With The Will, where we last left off. Our party finally approached the ancient temple, bound to learn whatever secrets would be kept inside. However, just as they cleared away the boulder with one of Yokoman's blasts, bright light consumed them from all the glyphs on the temple walls, and everything went white. When the world resolved itself again, slowly becoming pixels and then shadows and then solid textures and figures, you find yourselves, and we'll say who specifically in a moment, you find yourselves in an ancient stone room. The walls are high above your head. The floors are covered in dust and moss and all sorts of signs of time cracked and eroded bits of lime and sandstone the room you are in diverges in three directions left forward and right path each of them is blocked off by some kind of barrier 
The one on the left is colored a bright red. The one in the middle is colored a bright blue. And the one on the right is colored an orange. You see this room, more inscriptions covering the walls, and where before you could only notice a couple of those symbols that you all have been associated with, it's easy to find any of the symbols that you all saw drawn by Gawuman back in the village all around this place, in with the inscriptions and in with the word in here. And it's at this moment that you realize the most interesting thing about this strange place. And that's that outside of your partners, Isabella and Artie, you two are the only two here. Well, there goes the Digivolving Champion of the Year. <laughs> so what do we do now? I guess try to get back to them? Has this ever happened to y'all before? Shooting eyes at the, the Digipals. Delimon just throws their hands up. I've never been this far out west. I don't know what's happening, honestly. I just know that we're not outside anymore, and I'm not, you know, baking, so that's nice. <laughs> You're welcome, Hi. by the way. I hate I you. scream? We scream? Should we all scream? For ice cream? Lalamon's just like, I don't know if we need to scream yet. Yeah, I, I think, I think things will be okay if we can just find out where our, our friends are. Wait, how do we do that? What are what are the colors of the doors again? Uh, there's red on the left, blue on the middle, orange on the right. Aren't any of them green, Lalamon? Uh, Lalamon just looks on and just says, "Well, I don't know. These seem like some of the colors that were on the symbols, but that's yeah. I, when I looked at the tower the other day, it was like that that orange." Huh. Jelly Mon's just like, yeah, I saw that too. Isn't that supposed to be our color? I feel like your color is like lime green. But I see what you mean. She kind of flexes a bit. Green is kind of my color, honestly, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, Artie will, will saunter on up to the door. Yeah, but that's not our color. Come on, ours is red, right? Yeah. We're going we by the symbols. Mm-hmm. So then are we going to, like, separate again? Uh, that doesn't sound ideal. So what the fuck is blue? Sis, I don't... I don't make the rules. I didn't... I didn't come up with any of this. We look through the blue door since it doesn't pertain to either of us. It, like logic technically says, we should go with the ones that are our colors. But maybe that's the way they want us to think. Maybe they're like, <laughs> oh, they're so simple and like not that bright. They won't, they won't think to go through the door that doesn't resonate with either of them. Do people say that about us? I mean, no, but I think our report cards do. Oof. Mom said that she would keep that between me and her, and Artie will walk over to the blue door. As you're both walking towards the blue door, can I have you both give me brain rolls? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because okay. you so have bad dreams. How do I... Okay, roll... You, you mean logic, right? Yeah, that. The, the smart one. The, the, the kids' ones. One success, baby. We love that. One success, and it's a six. Oh, another Ooh. one! The algorithm continues to work in Corndog's favor. Of course. I may be stupid, but at least I'm cute. As a reminder, y'all are two sixes from a full critical gauge, just being aware of that, in case y'all are wondering. I know you guys at home can see that. I'm not doing this on purpose. This <laughs> is the Google machine. All right. Well, let's swap over. As the two of you walk over towards the door, and you're seeing the blue there, you're realizing that 
you see a couple things, and we'll 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 go over those things in just a moment. Actually, um, first, let's cut over to somewhere else. Scarlet. Yes. When the white resolves, when the blinding light resolves, and you're able to clear your vision, everything is dark for a brief bit. First, things slowly become again to resolve themselves. Pixel becoming shadow, becoming full image and texture. And when you are finally able to see everything, what you notice is, well, you're there in this dark room. There isn't any source of light around. The outs, the sunlight can't seem to pierce through whatever room you're in. It's also cold. Uncomfortably cold. Harriermon's in front of you and is looking at you, looking around, equally confused. Uh, what the hell happened? I don't know. Where's everyone else? I don't... Well... There's a bright flash, and now we're here, and there, uh, hold on, like, it's so dark, um, <sighs> Digi flashlight. Uh, you are able to turn on your flashlight on your Digi device, which you pull out of your, out of, out of wherever you keep it, and you see a face. It's quick, not long enough to get a full good glimpse. Whatever this figure is, it darts out of your light immediately. You move it a bit, and you could see another I, sort of figure. No, I literally, I literally scream. Ah, like I see yeah. a face. Yeah, like. Uh, you scream. Terry Mon jumps in front of you. Fists up. What? What's going on? What's there? What's happening? I saw a face in the room, and it's it's uh, trying to avoid the light. Um, Terry Mon. Y- yeah. Can you illuminate the whole room at once? Um, by shooting, by shooting, shoot, shoot. You, you, you have that breath you did that was like fire. Uh, shoot that upward. Uh, to the ceiling. I should... could try, but I don't know if we need to. Why? Am, am Why am do I you here think? For this? Uh, we'll get there. You look up, <laughs> and you see that Terrymon is looking around. And where before with that face, you could only really see a bright pair of eyes and maybe a crooked, glowing mouth. You see that in the darkness. And then another one. Just a glowing pair of eyes and a crooked, glowing mouth. You see one. And then a second one. And then a third, fourth, an eighth, a twelfth. Before you know it. You and Terriermon are surrounded by cackling faces, glowing and shrieking at you from every direction. Um, I, my, she reaches back and she, um, you know, she, uh, who, who what are you? Who are you? Terriermon, I don't think they want to talk. Um, like, this is like the situation that, I imagine every every person, but especially like one of the worst fears, like you're by yourself, dark dark alley, uh, being surrounded. Um, so Scarlet is um, she kind of like am I am I like do I have a wall to my back or am I like fully surrounded? You are fully surrounded. The only source of, of security you have right now is the terrier monitor in front of you. Um, Scarlet will kind of reach down and uh, pull out her knife. Because it's something. She doesn't, but she's not like making any aggressive things. She's just kind of like has it in case she needs to she doesn't know what's going on. I'm going to ask you a question, Scarlet. Mm-hmm. Does Terry or see this? Sure. You pull out the knife. It flicks open as you hold it to defend yourself or just to have something on you. Terriermon sees this and his eyes kind of open a bit. Just. You're going to fight? I don't want to, but I'm not going to let them kill us.
And I think actually it's as that happens, Terry, your mom kind of just looks at you a bit confused, wondering, maybe it's sort of, it's almost hard for you to place that thought. Scarlet, can you roll me a spirit test and hold the result? Tell me it later when I come back to you. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, babe. Appreciate it. Would break the noise uh, apply to here? Absolutely. Okay. And as you do that, we swing ourselves over and we come to fire next. It's uh, also. Hold it hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Whatever, whatever, whatever okay. number you got, just hold it. Okay. Scarlet, sorry. Nope. I fucked myself up. There we go. Fire. I Names are hard. There's so many of you, and you have Digimon too. We're, we're both a reddish thing. There we go. It's red. The Red too. So. <laughs> <clears throat> It's also dark for you at first when you awaken or when you clear the light from your vision. Yokomon was right next to you and is, as you assume, still there. But once, as everything resolves, as its pixels become shadows, become textures and figures again, you're not in the temple anymore. You're not next to Renamon. Oh. You're in. Class. We're in a classroom. God damn it. Weirdest thing is, there's nobody here. It's just you. In a Am room. I, like, sitting at a desk, or...? You're sitting on top of a desk. Like, you know, you're sitting on a desk. I guess I'll hop off of that and look around and is I guess check if the door to the classroom opens you start moving around and at first it's you know just empty and quiet as you're heading towards the door at one point you shuffle between or try to shuffle between like a desk and a chair and you bump the space in the, in the chair as if someone's sitting there and in that moment you bump that someone you can see just the slight ghostly impression of a person. The face isn't immediately familiar, but you're sure you've seen it once or twice in school, maybe, here or there. Does the person react to me bumping them? Nope. I just reaches a hand and just waves it in front of them. Just Nothing. Weird. And just keeps heading for the door. You get to the door. It opens. You walk out. You bump someone again. Someone is walking into the room. Teacher. But just like with the student, they don't seem to notice or mind you bumping into them at all. And again, you only see them in that brief ghostly flicker as you hit them. And once they move forward, they're gone again. So do I recognize this specific classroom? Yes, actually. You do. It's hard to specifically remember, because it's been so long. Or maybe not so long, but it's been a while. But you used to have this class a while ago. I was just going to be thinking to herself, just, what? Why am I here? Just... Just the see if there's anything mm -hmm. of importance around the classroom. You move around the classroom, and it's all recognizable in the vaguest way. Like, you could look at the books the, on the shelves and say, like, I think I remember seeing a few of these before. The notes people are writing down, you think some of those scribbles look familiar. The strangest thing is that anytime you talk, your voice, it doesn't echo, it repeats repeats constantly so eventually you can just hear buzzes here and there of your own voice things you've said a minute or two ago a breath you made too hard but that's the only sound of people you're capable of hearing even though you're now aware that this classroom is full of these ghost images of people 
Uh, I guess I'll try and like touch where one of the people is and see, like, does can I feel them? Or you can I... lay your hand on them. You can like you press your shoulder in the space where the person is, and again, as you make contact, you can see the ghostly image of the person. They don't make any response to the contact, though. In fact, this person you're touching is literally leaned over their desk and talking to the person behind them excitedly about something. You would know if you could hear anything they were saying. All right, out of out of sheer curiosity, uh, Fire is gonna just slap them across the face and see if anything happens. Nothing. Nothing. But it's as you make the slap, and that slap echoes and bounces around. It's then you recognize wherever this is, this school, this classroom, If I'm maybe I'm the only person in this town, but regardless, wherever I am, I'm effectively the only person here. There's no one who can interact with, talk to, or help me. In fire, I would like you to gain one strain. Or stra is it called stress strain? Uh, one strain? Uh, not bond strain. If there's the uh, it's the uh, the wound you you take as as a thing. I forget what it's called. Oh, a harm. Yes, take a harm for me, please. Actually, thank you very much. Uh, you're going to call can this harm isolated. And it's as you're recognizing that you are alone here. Is there anything you say to yourself finally as you're recognizing this? I'm just <sighs> fire fire's eyes will just tear up a bit and just be like Renamon, where are you? That phrase. Renamon, where are you? Renamon, where are you? Renamon, where are you? Bounces around the room. And as we slowly pan out from this scene, we see Fire's eyes, not wide in confusion as they are in this place, but frozen in a focused stare from behind a pane of blue as we now find ourselves refollowing the two uh, the two the two siblings Isabella and Artie who are looking at this blue pane and behind it is a stasis frozen fire oh figured out what's happening yet friends we got to get our friend out of there yep oh by the way uh fire fear test please <laughs> Fuck it up. I'm using another uh another bomb point? Another bomb point. Uh what? three successes. Oh, good success. All right. Holding on to that. Um, and we'll come no, back to that no in a moment. Success. So we come back out to the two siblings. You are facing the blue sort of froze uh frozen uh like uh pane in front of this walkway, and behind it you can see your friend again, just kind of frozen, their hand like they're touching. Ran up like they were touching Yokomon still, just kind of frozen. Yokomon's also there, also frozen, just kind of standing there. Do we break it? Do we? We do. Well, I think I think Artie before the question can even get asked is like pump pump. Foxfire. Hey, hey, pay attention. <laughs> We nuts bazooka it. <laughs> Lalamon's just like, I don't want to hurt her. You're gonna hey, shoot like, me we, with your we nuts. Try to yeah. We we try to shoot like the bottom corners or something like that to make the glass like break and fall down. You said it was a pain, right? Mm hmm We we don't know how thick it is. She might be trapped in there like it's ice, and then we end up shattering her too. Hold on, and Artie's gonna walk over to the the orange door and see what its deal is. There is nothing behind the orange door. It's empty, but as you approach and reach out your hand to it, it kind of doesn't shatter so much as crumple. When you reach out your hand to it, it crumples in from the outside edges, 
collapsing and condensing and congealing until you're holding it in your hand. Uh, if I open my hand, is is what I think is in there in there? What do you think's in there? Uh, crest? Damn right. Cool. There's a golden necklace in your hand. Uh, a bit like that? The only difference is it does not have that orange tag in the middle. Go, go to yours. Okay. Hold on, will you come with me? I'm nervous that I might get sucked into it and I need you to like bring me back here just in case. Lalamon in a these. strangely he's like, what? please go. Please. Like Artie comes over and is like, I'm here. We're here. We've got you. Okay. Okay, I'm just nervous. You got this. Lalamon, <laughs> as you get close to the, the wall, Lalamon hops out of your kangaroo pack pocket and reaches her hand up as best as possible and just grabs your hand and then turns and looks at Artie and holds a hand up. <laughs> and then uh, I reach out a hand for uh, Jellymon. Just reaches up and squeak, grabs Hild. Oh, that feels weird. Lalamon just looks back and says, echoing Artie's words, we're here. It's okay. I touch the door. In almost an exact mirrored experience, you watch as slowly, bit by bit, that red barrier crumples and condenses down until you're holding it in your hand. And similarly, when you look, you and Artie are now clutching twin golden necklaces with a small space in the middle, like something would slot into it. Uh, I instantly go, is this Power Rangers? And then, like, smash our two necklaces together uh, in hopes that they connect to each other or, like, friendship necklaces or something You, like you, you smash it into mine and, like, yeah. it knocks it to the ground. Ow! Ow! I, sorry, I thought I had an idea. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the right one. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it and, did. And Artie will pick it up. You did see the briefest flare of sparks. It didn't look intentional almost, but as you two as they touched, there was this kind of just brief small flicker and then you two separated, and, you know, because Artie dropped theirs. Artie will, like, pick it back up and then bring it close. And be like... They kind of resonate. Not so much um, as they kind of just feel right near each other. But there's a feeling I mean... of Lacking completeness. Like there should be more of these. We should we go touch Scarlet's maybe or Foxfires? Uh, maybe yeah. that'll that'll like resonate the ice off of her. And uh Artie is gonna like slap a hand with the crest uh up against it. Tag. This is the tag. Mm. You I two think. slap your hands against this, holding your tags together against the blue pane. It begins to glow, listening. We cut back in. We see Foxfire sitting there, wondering, quietly sobbing a bit, wondering where Winamon is. And while you don't hear your partner's voice, you start to feel something. It's hard to describe except a compulsion pulling you out of the door and down the hallway, like saying you should walk out of this classroom door and down the hallway. I push the door open and start walking out. You walk down the hallway, still hearing the voices of the things you've said recently. What's going on? Where am I? Renamon, where are you? All around you louder and louder until it's not just your voice saying it but screaming it blaring through your ears it gets so loud you almost stumble the sound berating your eardrums but you rolled a three on that spirit test 
So you push through, res resolute and resounding. And as you slowly reach that door down the hallway, you push through it and light, blue light, not that bright white, washes all over you. Artie and Scarlet, you watch as slowly that blue pain crumples inward and inward until uh, Fire's outstretched hand is holding it and then closes as you're able to move again, you and Renamon. It seems like the stasis made Yokomon devolve back to Re back to Renamon. Hmm. Well, that what was happened? weird. What, what happened with you guys? You looked super dead. Did I look cadaverific? Not Don't dead, joke about like, this. In cryostasis, at least. Seriously, you were like reaching, like out. stuck in a in a blue cube. Like that is there, fox lady is in there... the one game? Hmm? <laughs> like the fox lady in the one game? Like the fox lady. Our fox adventures. I was gonna say for the GameCube with right. the dinosaurs. Uh-huh. I was Star gonna fox? say the cube from Transformers. Wait, Star the fox? There was the cube. That one's good too. Like that. Like that. Uh you all hear a light melodic chuckling. It's Renamon, just kind of having a soft giggle. Looks over at Foxfire and just, I don't think I've seen you be so friendly yet. I guess it's just nice to not be alone. As long as I'm here, you won't be alone for a while. Threat. Fire, fire Take all the credit, just... punk. <laughs> well, while well, she might be trying to be stoic, she just hugs Renamon. She easily just one arm wraps you in, gives you a hug, pats the top of your head. And as you're all waiting and enjoying this reunion, Foxfire, you would also notice there is a tag in your hand. A golden necklace with a space in the middle. Like something slots into it. Yo, we get chains here? <laughs> yeah, something. Oh shit, where's Scarlet? Perfect segue, thank you. <laughs> Scarlet! We get back to you. Knife drawn, back to Terriermon, who is looking at you and wondering what's gonna happen and asking you again, are you gonna fight? And he just says, I'm not gonna let him kill us. Terriermon puts a hand up and puts it on your knife. And slowly lowers your hands. What do you want my spirit roll? Yeah, what you got? Um, well, I was using the knife, so that gives me a uh, plus two. Mm -hmm. So I got four successes, two sixes. Two sixes. Okay, so that would be a total of six successes if the mm -hmm. sixes count as two. That's a complete success. More than a success, where's actually. our critical gauge? Uh, I'll talk to that about that in just a moment. So, um... <laughs> yeah, so... Terriamon picks puts his hand up and lowers your knife and just says, We all gotta fight sometimes. But you don't have to fight right now. I'm not gonna let him hurt you. Well, I don't want them to hurt you either. Kind of says, hey, I'm a big guy. Or at least, and he kind of looks at you, cocking his head as if questioning. Or at least, I can be. He kind of hards his face up a bit. Our friends need us, Scarlet. She...
they they do. Okay, but let's just we need to get through this. Let's get out of here, yeah? Yes. And without even having to bring out your digivice, you can feel it glowing in your hand already. Ariermon swells up with light, and his silhouette begins to kind of grow and swell. And as I find the one shot, there it is, there it is. And as it resolves, you see that once again, towering over you now, is Gargomon. Gun hands and all. He just says, stand back. I'll deal with these, spinning the revolvers in his hands. Oh, lost you. Yeah. Uh, what is. was the last thing you heard me say? Uh, you, uh, Scarlet was like, "Yes, let's let's go." Perfect. We need, we they do need us. And yeah, I, I heard that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then Scarlet is just, uh, says, "Well, the surrounded us. I can't really set." But she tries to like get behind him, but You're... like she can't really, you know. You're able to move. grab on to his uh, leg as he spins those Gatling guns points them in a direction, and just gets to firing and strafing runs in circles, blowing out chunks and holes into these shadowy faces all around you. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the thing you notice more and more is that as it's blowing these holes out, out, it's not just blowing away the faces, it's also smashing the shadow out, blowing light into this area here as... This attack actually is also light type, mm -hmm. also. And as blowing and blasting away these shadows eventually these faces begin to begin to shriek and recoil and fall away gargoman is laughing having the time of his life just strafing his arms back and forth but you see that he's not just blasting wildly he's specifically trying to keep his leg tucked back so that you are never in danger and just constantly turning left and right still having a good fucking time obviously but focusing more on keeping you safe than on fighting. And it's as you're watching this blast of the shadow away, you look to the floor and see the shadow has been cut through by a giant symbol. It's almost like a teardrop with a single circle in the middle of it. It's bright green and glows, painting the whole area in light, banishing the last of the shadows. Yeah, a lot like that, actually. Uh-huh. And it's as you solidify this, as the crest solidifies on the floor and blasts away the last of the shadow, Gargomon turns, grabs your leg, or, or grabs back, sort of grabs you against his leg, and sleeps with the one gun, waiting for more enemies to show up. That yeah. symbol shatters. The floor gives out. Light colors you. And you and Gargomon are rapidly falling towards the floor of the room the rest of your friends are in. He's and beneath magic. you and already just grabs you and scoops you up so you're not going to like fall or anything obviously. Yeah. And then I imagine he can use his great leap to get us down safely. Mm hmm Hits a wall, slides a little bit, jumps off of it, hits another pillar, slides down a little bit, jumps, backflips, lands. Get it! Damn. <laughs> nice entrance, Gargamon. Hey! Missed you guys. Everybody okay? It's just like the like like the not just from that what this happened, but also just from literally like the foul and the jumping. Like she's like a little pale and she's just like clutching tight on <laughs> Gargomon. Yeah. Gargomon opens up his arms and slowly kind of lets you down. And as you get let down, you look up and see that where the ceiling or where the floor of your where you were trapped shatters. There are now you sort of glistening bits of crystal almost not sharp enough they're not sharp they're not no one's being hurt obviously but slowly descending almost like glittering light green snow it's just a slight rain of crystal particles from where you shattered from painting you all in this and as you look up you can see falling down slowly floating down towards your hands is a golden tag the necklace behind it with a space in the middle like something should be slotted in there okay 
reach up and grab it, I guess. It's not the one seeing that everyone else has these tags, too. Like... Mm -hmm. Gargomon, who hasn't looked down, but does see the tag, looks down to see the, see the tag, just says, I think I'm getting it. It's not about just blowing everything up. It's about meaning it when you fight. Fighting for people you care about. Yeah? <laughs> Fighting when you need to. When you, when you most need to, because it tr truly matters, yeah. Hmm. He smiles. You catch your crest or your tag in your hand. And it's as you all are in this scene gathered together again. I'm going to let you guys know. You have a full crit gauge. So the, the deal with that is uh, we can have all of our bond points fully restored. And then something can get nasty. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is that the move we're going to go for? I say smash the button! <laughs> let's do it! <laughs> you smash the button. You... As you're all enjoying this piece, settling in and enjoying it and feeling everything kind of gathered together, you recognize, hey, there's one person who's normally not this quiet who we haven't seen all day. Where the hell's Kian? And it's just oh, as that man. happens that a part of the ceiling of the room you're in is literally blasted in by a big metal cannonball. Big, a big, big hole. Darugamon swoops in from above. Kian still on their back, landing. And Kian just hops down and goes, Guys, 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 I, sorry, I didn't say anything. I went scouting this morning and wanted to see some stuff and, and, and the tower's moving. Tower is what? The tower is moving. To us so, or where? Um. No, it wasn't our minds playing tricks on us. It it was closer than it was, but it's moving. I. I think it's a Digimon. That's a big Digimon. Come on, could you get us up to the sea? Yeah, come on, everyone, grab on. And Gargamon's a big boy. He can probably take at least mo uh, the, uh, the four of you in his arms with no question. Boop. Scoops you all up. Right. I, I assume Renamon will just be cool, doing yeah, cool Renamon's ninja gonna do cool, cool ninja shit. Just wall run or some shit. I don't know. Some something is breaking <laughs> nonsense. As you all gather up and leap up or whatever you want to mm -hmm. this outer layer of the temple, Gargomon lands, looks on, and in the distance you can see the tower has shifted. It's shifting over to one side slowly. Then it stops. Kind of shifts back this way. And then it stops. Then it shifts back the other way a bit more. Then it stops and rustles. To the left of it you can see something else in the sand being disturbed. As it finally rises up out of the ground, you can see a massive skeleton. It is humanoid as it has twin hands. As it pulls itself up, there is a large skull faced, wide and birthed like a lizard with teeth and rows. Its legs come up and it stands on its back. It carries the tower used around itself almost like a missile of some kind uh digivice oh yeah, yeah. great call you point your digivices and as one they all say the same thing ultimate level digimon skull greymon and then the screen glitches as if something is wrong fuck I, 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 I kind of like smack it a bit. It seems like when you're looking at it, Scarlet, a regular skull Greymon has a massive warhead on its back, a orangish missile of some kind. Yeah. Right where the tower is on this one. Oh. Wait a oh minute, we no. Think, 
We've seen this before. No, we've seen this before. See, then she'll look, look over at Fry. Um, Fry, didn't you say that when you fought that that punk? Um, not punk. Uh, what was his name? Um, Daisuke. Daisuke. With the um, what did you say it was like a moon mon? A, a Luna bunny. Mon, yeah. A Luna. Yeah, another uh, moon bunny. Luna mon. You said that. Didn't you say there was like it looked like it had a whole bunch of different data things stuck in it? Uh, only when I scanned it with my digivice, it didn't look different. I feel like we... now's not the time for talking. Yeah, it's probably not, especially because that big old skull Greymon we're looking at, it's looking right back at you guys. Oh, but that... Renamon, how how fucked are we? Renamon takes a stance and says. In a word, very. Well, we should run then. And and uh, Arcane is think... like already grabbed you and is like tugging you away from where we're standing, fully anticipating like some kind of fuckery rockets. And it's wait, who who are you pulling? Uh, it's Scarlet specifically. And it's you as know, you, you all scatter. The, the, the person who talks about our problems the longest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's as you all ga gather up and prepare to scatter to run, the Skull Greymon leans back and roars. And from that tower, a burst of purple energy fires up into the air and begins to rain down on the landscape around you guys. Well, what does um, what does a Gargomon do? Gargomon's mostly just freaking the fuck out right now is the scariest thing I think is that Gargomon seems always warmed up for a fight and even right now Gargomon doesn't seem like he wants to fight okay okay, okay cool that, that's good <laughs> so we're leaving <laughs> and so as you all gather up fill up your bond points as this new threat increases and as you all turn to run Lalamon literally spilling out of out of Isabella's like you know a, a, a pocket as she's like trying to get on the ground and run with her little legs Delimon sticking to Artie and, and trying to run forward. Renamon already like trying to like back up and, 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 co and cover fire. And Gargamon just turning and grabbing uh, the, the combined Artie Scarlet combo and just turning to jump again. The camera freezes with Skull Greymon roaring in the background. And that is where we will draw tonight to a close. <laughs> I have regrets about our critical gauge decision. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. I'm it's, a, this. it's a wonderful there chart of you all just rolling sixes forever. Honestly, so to waste bond points. Yeah, you're just gonna keep rolling six 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 every single time. There's a We're wonderful a chart I love to, to I love this. to cite here of a coalition to uh, fucking around to finding out, and uh, I'm pretty sure y'all are hitting the apex of that uh, that a little a little a little, little, little diagram there. Any oh. case, I mean folks, it fits with all the six six sixes. That's that... true. We've been getting from this was the demon I summoned. I apologize. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, quite literally, actually. But we'll get it. We'll get. We'll deal with that later. Um. In any case, now that we've encountered our first mutant Digimon, uh, friends, this has been an incredible episode of With the Will. I'm gonna briefly cut the curtain back and say that I had a nightmare going on in the in the background behind the scenes today before we went live today, and I was super out of whack. And so I want to thank my cast for just being so fucking on their game tonight and making it so that I could just. Just kick back and run the shit without too much effort. Uh, if it wasn't like, you know, the greatest performance I've ever brought to you guys, I'm sorry, but I think my cats more than made up for it with their incredible performances and their wonderful role plays they always bring. Uh, I've been Young Foxy, host of this wonderful show. And of course, I've had these four incredible tortillas with me. I want to let it uh, outro themselves. So please, one last time, tell us who you are, who you've been playing, where you can be found on the internet, and what you've got coming up for us next as the holidays end and the new year comes around. We start on the right with the most legendary of vermins. Sorry, uh, just just writing something into chat. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Legendary Vermin. You can find me as Legendary Vermin on all the places on the internet that matter, which is, of course, itch, twitch, tumblr, and for as long as it lasts, uh, uh, Twitter. Oh, also, also YouTube. Also YouTube. Maybe. Uh, I, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I make games. I talk about games. I didn't release anything new, but on my Tumblr, there is a cool hack for uh, injecting some backstory building 
uh, uh, nicknames and epithets uh, to, to any sort of fantasy genre of your choosing, go check out my Tumblr blog. It's quite active. Um, also, keep an eye out because I have some upcoming shows that I'm really excited about, uh, including the premiere on the first Monday of next month, that is January 2nd, of The World Within You, the Voidheart Symphony game, right here on Neon Lights Roleplay at 5 o'clock Pacific Time. Um, I'm really, really excited. We've been doing a lot of work in the background to get this ready. The The art is good. The cast is, is, is better. And uh, I'm just so fucking stoked to, to finally get to bring that to life. So please join me for that. And catch the other shows that I'm in, uh, including but not limited to Frozen Rain with The Will, which will be back next month. Um, uh, Last Transmission, which is the first Thursday of every month. Uh, just get in here and get yourself a piece of me. I'm in so many shows with you, Vermin. It's so, I'm so spoiled, honestly. Yeah, you are spoiled. It's you wonderful. Get so I get all the Vermin the to myself. Legendary. It's wonderful, honestly. I, I'm, I'm so happy to be me right now, frankly. Once when, again, when do we get the gay character romance between you and Vermin? You know, we'll talk. Don't you worry. In any case, uh, watch against the light. More importantly, <laughs> <laughs> we are, of course, lacking the incomparable Classical Gliza, who you can find on Twitter at Classical Gliza. They are super, super great. They have a bio link in their, in their, in their Twitter bio to tell you where the stuff they're doing. I know they're currently running an awesome uh, Totally Spies-based game over on Girls on These World called Spy.edu, which aired, I'm pretty sure... Two days ago, had one of his first episodes. It's super, super cool. It has a lot of really cool stuff going for it. Definitely check them out. Uh, we missed them a lot. and can't wait to have them back here with us next month. Swinging down to, again, the bottom of the overlay, but never the bottom of anyone's cast list, if you ask me. I drop bottles at Jane Acres. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Jane Acres, and today I played Scarlet Goliath. And, um, uh, yeah, today was exciting. Um... <laughs> Play her, you did. You sure, you sure yeah. did play her today. You sure did. Yeah. And um, right, n like right now, the um, Rift the Will is like the only thing that I have that is like currently scheduled. But um, either in the next coming weeks or most likely in January of uh, 2023 next year, I am going to be starting off a um, Pine Box Middle School game. Um, over on Singularity, uh, Pine Box is like the newest uh, setting by Pinnacle Entertainment for uh, the System Savage Worlds, and it's basically about uh, middle school middle schoolers dealing with um, the supernatural, family issues, and school life. So that's I think that's going to be a lot of fun to uh, run. I got I'm not going to re reveal who is in it yet, but I think I have a good cast for that. So. Secret cast. Ooh. Secret tunnel. Tuned, is, we we don't know when it's gonna happen yet. So. Oh, well, then like, we'll find. Well, then you. Well, then stay tuned so you can find out, friends. Simple as that. Um, I do have a Twitter. Um, that's also JN Acres, and sometimes I talk about movie stuff, and but that's about it. So. Well, uh, happy to have you here, Acres. Swinging over more towards the left of, for you, the audience members, to again my close personal friend of over a decade, who I am always happy to share a table with. It's, of course, Spree Mmm, yes, hello. You're not allowed to make me have feelings during these campaigns, Foxy, you know this. It's a Foxy game! What are you expect? What, what? What do you know what you signed up for? I know, I know. Only a moderate amount of, of crying. On stream. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, so, uh... I had a lot of fun tonight being fire for all you guys, and uh, hopefully next time we can have Gliza help us deal with all the fuck shit that we have unleashed. Um, yeah, if you look at my Twitter, maybe I'll get hacked again and advertise Ray-Bans. Otherwise, you're not going to see any posts. <laughs> that's just, that's still always Joke funny. will never die. Where do you think I got these babies? Well, listen. <laughs> I'll 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 do the personal plug and say, not only it, will you see Spree next month on with the will, but if things work out just perfectly and you stay tuned, you might just see them pop up on another little show we run here. I won't tell you which one. Just know it's a possibility. Any case, can I tell them though? If you want to, a blades will. Duh. That's right, Arashi's back, motherfuckers. 
obviously, in case you thought about it. So you know, yeah, we're bringing back all the old, all the OG cast, in case you were wondering about that. So that's gonna happen soon. Look out for Spring and the Blades. Will any case swinging over here one last time, one last outro, and then we're out of our, out of your hair for the evening. But of course, how could we end a night without paying our due respects to the goddess, the greatest? This, I, I, I'm out of adjectives. I got nothing else. It's corn dog. Hi, corn dog. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, corn dogs. You can find me on the internet at corn dog McGraw or Coach Corn Dog, depending on what your needs are in that specific realm. Uh, catch me here in four weeks. I reprise my role as Isabel Fix. Uh, and <laughs> uh, eventually. All Hail the Queen will take a temporary stroll on Dat Magic's Juice channel. Dat Magic Juice's channel. I don't know. Words are hard. Uh, but if you're into watching some fuck shit, like a frog butthole, uh, something like that, come hang out. Corn dog. The 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 fact that any game involving you in it involves a frog butthole is the least surprising thing you've said to me tonight. Just, I know. Thank you. Just that that's that feels incredibly on brand. Not for even, you, I'm not even the frog. It's not even my butthole. Wow. <laughs> wow. You hear that chat? You don't get any buttholes from her. <laughs> Only the frog. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. For we're me. devolving at this point. We're degenerating right, friends. Bye. That's it. Well, right. we've been with the will. And um, friends, I I'm right, I gotta do my outro. I forgot. God, it's late. I'm Foxy. Um, I'm Young Foxy, Big Foxy, also known as Favorite Fox, Philly's Finest. I'm on Twitter at Young Foxy. It's Y U N G F O double X double I, no underscore anymore. Uh, don't go right wingers. I slay fascists. I have a great time doing it. Next time you'll see me is exactly one week from today for Stardust Ghosts. It won't be the live me, it'll be a pre recorded me for another episode. And that will be, believe it or not, the last, sorry, it's the second to last Neon Light stream for the year. We will end our year off with a wonderful holiday one shot. GM by the incomparable Tate Washburn. And that'll be it for us for the rest of the year. But trust and believe me, we have so much planned for you for January, babes. So please stay Thanks. tuned, stay locked, and uh, don't uh, cause any trouble. I hope your holidays are wonderfully smooth, that you find all the love and joy you need in the world. And if you don't have it anywhere, well, then come on over to Vanilla's Let's Roleplay. We got some in stock for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Have a great night, babies. We love you so Thanks. very much. And we will see you in exactly four weeks. Thank you, and good night. Bye. 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 Yeah.